I've just seen children literally like go like they have a, a scarf over their face and then just be like, oh my gosh, I see things so differently. And an example is there was a 13 year old girl um, who was driving with her mom and she called me and she's like, Miss Leslie, I just drove by a billboard and there is a half naked woman on the billboard and she's, and she's selling work boots. That woman's being objectified. And I was like, yes. So it's like just something so simple as that where young girls are taught at a young age that their value is in their sexiness, in their looks, in their bodies. That that's the that that is, um, you know, where their value comes for, from. And even studies like the Gina Davis Institute of Gender um, and Media, they have found that children as young as six years old are self-sexualizing, believing in order to be appreciated by society that they need to be deemed sexy. So when a young girl or a young boy can look at a men's fitness magazine that is marketing a six pack, look at you know the um, look at celebrities on stage in a music video video who are dancing in hypersexualized ways and be able to determine whether or not that's empowering for them to be able to see branding marketing commodification it changes the rest of their life because they're not just going to download these concepts as as the truth. So I think critical thinking, teaching children critical thinking about advertisements, teaching them what Photoshop is, it, um, teaching them what puberty is. We have a section in the self-esteem program for the teenagers that talks about how amazing puberty is and how awful it feels and it's okay. Acne is a big thing that dancers are struggling with because they're up in front of the mirror. And if you're a teenager and you're faced with yourself in the mirror having to learn a skill and then you're comparing your face to other people's faces, no one's ever telling teenagers, like, you still get to keep your spirit swag even if you have a pimple. Like, your pimple, your face, your skin, the condition of your body, your cellulite, these, these things cannot take away your spirit swag. So, you know, in a lot of cases, I may be the only person that sets this idea in front of them, that tells them they don't have to just believe that, you know, what, you know, a celebrity is telling them that they need to feel good about themselves is truth. They get to look and say, hold on a second, how does social media make my emotions feel? We do this exercise where we share our top three positive and our top three negative emotions with social media. Children aren't even aware they're having emotions. That's how unconscious social media use has become, um, is that they're not even realizing as they jump from one app to another app that they're feeling anxiety, they're feeling depressed, they're feeling fat suddenly, they're feeling jealous and envious. So when we can talk about it and, and practice mindfulness around how is this puppeting our self-esteem? How is it puppeting our self-compassion? You can, you can um, give children tools to empower themselves, but a child who's 12 who's in dance, they're, they're following these people on every platform, which then reinforces the brand, which then rewires their brain, which then changes the self-concept, the self-compassion, the self-esteem, which then creates how are they interacting in a community. So all of these things are related. All of the, it's an interconnected web. You can't talk about sexualization without talking about sex abuse. You can't talk about um, nutrition without talking about body image. You can't talk about body image without talking about eating disorders. You know, you can't talk about eating disorders without talking about anxiety. You can't talk about anxiety without depression. All of these things are interconnected and, and because kids love dance and we get to be dance educators, that's why we created certification to empower us to help these kids help themselves and to help parents be more involved. Mm -hmm. Talking about the White Pet Parent Seminar, um, really what, what we do is I try to create um, an environment that is no shaming, no blaming, um, no judgment, and to just out ourselves. As parents, every parent has the temptation to live vicariously through their child. We all have that. We don't need to be embarrassed or ashamed. There's all of these things that happen in parenting that actually can cause parents to impose ideas of overachievement to children. Put unnecessary or even unconscious pressure on children. Always put the dancer before the dance. Always put the dancer before the dance. No award, no competition, no viral YouTube video, no like on Instagram, no ego inflation, no, no self-esteem hit is more important than the emotional, physical, and sexual safety of your child. So in order to do that, we have to talk about it, which can be really uncomfortable for some parents. So, um, you know, I think that I can tell you why pad 
and parents have created, and there's so much about parents that I want to say that I love because I've seen parents be able to be self-reflective. I've seen parents have humility and, and say, wow, I think my child's actually addicted to social media. Could we, could I get on the phone and talk with one of your therapists about this? Or I think I missed the signs of an eating disorder. You know, I was actually encouraging to lose her to lose weight because I thought she was looking good. You know, there's so many things that parents didn't realize until the seminar that they may be doing to contribute to some of their children's issues. And then we do a thing with the parents where they get a chance to look at their own self-esteem um, because it's interconnected. A parent's self-esteem is related to a child's self-esteem. So it's really transformative for parents also. So when YPAD comes into an organization, we, we basically try to hit every role, disperse education to everyone, the child, the parents, the teachers, the studio owner, or the organization leader, because that way everybody's empowered and we can all come together and do um, the best for these kids by doing the best for us. Trisha Gomez, who runs um, Rhythm, um, uh, Rhythm Works Integrative Dance, it's a dance certification for um, children with special needs. She's on our advisory panel, and she always says, um, the, the way we can make the best version of children is to create the best versions of us. And I totally wholeheartedly believe in her. So that's why we do the seminars, and that's why we do the certification. Triggering is, is a huge thing with emotional health, right? What is triggering you? Um, and dance environments are full of triggers because we're body conscious, there's competitiveness, there's jealousy, there's envy. So these things are really interrelated. The most important thing is talking about it, which dance environments up until YPAD didn't have a space to say, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about mental health in dance studios. We need to talk about the parents' role, the teacher's role, our role, as what are we saying? How are the kids interacting? So I think that, um, you know, after I leave, after I leave um, doing a YPAD event, I spend the next few days basically being bombarded with emails. You know, hey, can you da da da? Hey, I've got this. And my child just admitted she's cutting to me. My child just admitted she was, you know, she's feeling suicidal. All of these things boil up to the surface. And that's a good thing. That is a good thing. I mean, what is the alternative? That children are sitting on suffering? That parents are feeling embarrassed that there's suffering? That there's dysfunction? Where we live in a society that is basically dysfunctional on so many levels in terms of um, being feeling free to be vulnerable? I mean, we're in a vulnerability deficit in our society, and a lot of that has to do with social media and, I, and what I call the F word. I'm fine. We know what a lot of us are not fine. And the biggest thing, reason we're not fine is because we don't have a space to be not fine. And to just say, I'm not fine. I'm struggling in my marriage. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. All of these things affect dance environments. So, you know, I think that um, that it's it, why why should we be ashamed that we're human? You know, I don't want. Why should we teach children to be ashamed that they that they feel? It, it's they they shouldn't be ashamed. They're not their feelings. They're not their emotions. Good people do bad things. Good people make bad choices. We all have done it. So shame is a big part that we need to teach children shame resiliency, resiliency, understanding guilt, understanding, um, understanding loss, understanding they're not always going to get the award. They're not always going to be in front and you can still keep your spirit swag, right? You can still say what my dance talent and my dance accolades and my award have nothing to do with my self value. These things are not related. Also in all of this, um, the unhealthy narcissism that has been that has developed in the dance culture um, and, un, and I used to be part of this one of the biggest reasons why I can name it and see it is because I used to be the biggest narcissist in the world when I and narcissism is actually a sign of insecurity that's why I self-sexualized that's why I started that's why I came to the edge every day with a full face of makeup right that's why that's why I didn't consider what my explicit song choices were saying to the kids that were in my class because when you're narcissistic you're not thinking about how things are affecting others because you're thinking about me, 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 me. So with YPAD, we want to unpack an unhealthy narcissism, not because narcissists are evil, bad people, but because most narcissists are not healthy, whole people. And that's not what we want for our children or our parents or our communities. And what type of art does that breed? Inside dance, it, sex abuse is in dance. It's not specific to dance. 
any child-centered activity is going to run the risk of sex abuse, but because we have no regulatory body in dance, um, sex abuse in dance has gone unreported, uncared about, dismissed, and hidden for decades. And it's time that that changes. And I don't feel discouraged about that. I am excited about all of this bubbling up and coming to the forefront because now there's healing. One of the things that we teach YPAD in YPAD, not your body, don't comment on it. We teach kids from, from as you step out of here, please consider not commenting about another person's body because when people share their body shame, kids share like, well, I don't like this, I don't like that. They always say, well, somebody said something to me about it. Someone said my ears stick out. Someone said that my freckles were ugly. So I, I say to the kids, what if everybody just said, zip it, we don't comment on people's bodies. Let's comment on their character. The Edify Movement is our outreach division of Youth Protection Advocates in Dance, and we have done everything from set creative arts showcases down at the Midnight Mission here locally um, in LA, where we've just opened the doors up to the homeless at the Mission and put on a huge um, performing art showcase to literally taking our cars down behind the rescue mission on the street and opening our car doors and having clothes and food and hygiene kits and turning music on and freestyling with the homeless in the streets um, to packing up our bags and getting ourselves down to Anahuac, Mexico to um, Casa de la Esperanza Orphanage, which is an amazing orphanage led by Gil and Becky Sanchez. And this is gonna be our seventh year going. Um, we also went to Uganda one year and taught dance um, at an orphanage in Uganda to 300 awesome kids. Dance heals trauma. And when you have so many children in our world, not just in our international world, even in our local world, and every city has eight, has children that are de dealing with PTSD. Um, you know, uh, abuse on children isn't an American problem. It's not a African problem. It's not a, um, a Mexico problem. It's, it's a problem in our culture that children have been abused. And especially in spaces where there's poverty, children don't have access to the arts. No one's gonna be hiring in a dance teacher. No one's gonna be going to dance classes or um, you know, teaching um, singing or musical theater or drama classes. What we do is we go every year and we bring children as young as 13 as our assistants and we do an entire week dance camp at the orphanage. We teach everything from lyrical to ballet to break dancing and we create a recital. Our director, Joseph, um, he puts together the entire event. Um, Joseph Zanovich is one of YPAD's director. He's also my incredible husband. He's the super glue to everything that we do. You know, people think that I'm, I know I'm the face of YPAD, but behind me is 25 advisory panel members, four board of directors, and literally dozens and dozens of volunteers across the world who keep this going every single day. So it's like, you know, I, I never can take credit not one second can I take credit that why had an edify movement every day make it through to from you know from beginning to end because it's so many people coming together as a collaborative effort and these outreach trips are life changing and outreach is important and I think what's most important about our outreach is we never just let people dance you don't you don't get to just show up and dance and get applauded you're gonna show up you're gonna clean some toilets you're gonna cook some meals you're gonna wipe some booties you're gonna do something that is not glamorous, and then you can also share dance. But we also, we just really believe that that's part of us growing as a dancer is being balanced and being of service in other ways that's, that aren't just about, we just got applauded and everybody thinks we're really cool because we can move, although that is fun. So yes, yeah, so that's a little bit about Edify Movement, the outreach division of YPAT. So in that, um, YPAD's exhausting, YPAD is challenging, but YPAD is a mission and the benefactors are us as adults and our awesome, awesome children who are going to be the next leaders of this world, which we really need badly. <laughs>